Well viewers, it finally happened. If you guys remember from my previous video yesterday, which was a huge AI news video, one of the main talking points was the fact that OpenAI was releasing the long-awaited ChatGPT plugins and web browsing to every single ChatGPT Plus user. To become a ChatGPT Plus user, it's really quite simple. You just have to pay 20 bucks a month. I should have made it more clear in the video, but slowly as this current week goes on more and more people are going to get access to plugins and web browsing I viewers just got access so today I'm gonna show you guys around the brand new redone interface and experiment with plugins and web browsing features viewers may I present to you the brand new chat GPT by the way when chat GPT plugins were first announced I immediately got chat GPT plus because I knew it was gonna be a feature that was added to chat GPT plus first. As you can see, everything's a little bit different. We've got a new selector for GPT 3.5 versus GPT 4. And of course, we see our fastest model, great for everyday tasks. This is the model you get with free users, of course. And then this is GPT 4, obviously exclusively to plus users. You have it in default mode, browsing mode, which of course can search the web and click on different links. And then finally, we've got plugins mode. And again, this is where you can go to the plugin store and find all these plugins. Now, this is very important, viewers. If you want to go ahead and enable these brand new features in ChatGPT+, Plus, you're going to have to go down to your settings here and then click on the settings tab, from which you're going to want to go down to beta features and enable web browsing and plugins. What is very strange is that some folks, and I've seen this in the comments of my videos and on my Discord server, are saying that they only have access to web browsing or only have access to plugins. I am not sure what that's all about, but um, OpenAI is going to have to answer that one for you guys. My guess would be something to do with accessibility in different countries, or maybe they really are rolling it out that slowly where some users are only getting one feature at first. Not exactly sure. Either way, you got to enable them in your settings before they actually show up in ChatGPT. This is the first major update we've seen to ChatGPT in a long time. Now, plugins were announced a while ago, but only a handful of devs really got access. So I am very keen and excited to test all of this out. Default ChatGPT4 we've had for a while. Let's try browsing. Now, we've had browsing on Bing Chat, and Bing's AI chat is a lot like ChatGPT. However, there is some different safety features, and Bing's search is fairly limited. Like, in this case, ChatGPT is allowed to click on specific links, and I feel like it's going to be a little bit more directable than Bing Chat is. It's kind of hard to get Bing Chat to pull specific information. First question, search the web for Matt Vidpro AI. Who is he? So now it's browsing the web here. We can see the little spinner going on, and this is essentially all of the tasks that it's doing. It searched for Matt Vidpro AI. Now it's thinking, so it conducted a basic search at least. We know that much. It's interesting. I don't know what browser it uses to search. Is it Google based or does OpenAI have their own or I guess it might be Bing. Click failed. Oh, interesting. So yeah, you can see it's doing this as well where it's allowed to click on links, but sometimes they fail. Off to a rocky start here with ChatGPT. Hopefully this gets better. I guess it is important to note that these features are technically in a beta phase, so they're not complete products yet. So it failed two separate clicks. Now it's giving me some base information. It's, it was able to read some basic content at least. This is the level of information I would receive from Bing Chat. So, so far, not really impressed. He has a channel called Matt Vidpro where he creates and shares videos about artificial intelligence. He has around 176,000 subscribers on YouTube and produced over 900 videos. These numbers are definitely different now than what we're seeing here. So it's not really pulling super accurate information. This is, ex again, what I would expect from Bing Chat. It's interesting that it, it literally lists my YouTube channel as a source. However, it wasn't able to pull the actual subscriber count. Can you search his channel and pull a more accurate subscriber count? I really don't know what the failed clicks are. So it's trying to click on a link right now. And again, click failed. So it's it's failing to click on certain links. It's, it seems like most links on the web are banned from ChatGPT's clicking. See, and then this is less uh, accurate information than the, the first one. Why did the click fail, ChatGPT? Blocked access from the automated web browsing tool used to fetch the page content is probably the most likely 
reason. OpenAI is really strict on their web browsing at the moment, it seems. Very, very disappointing. I can't even retrieve simple information like the YouTube subscriber count. What is Matt Vidpro's latest tweet? It should literally only need to go to my Twitter. Now it's giving me inaccurate old information, just like Bing Chat. Why don't we just give it the actual link to my Twitter? So apparently this thing is not allowed to access Twitter yet because the click failed. It could be a restriction on Twitter's end, not allowing ChatGPT to access it. Interesting, I would love to know what is causing these click failed issues because it's kind of locking up this web browsing feature, making it not really work as intended at all. What websites are allowed? Well, OpenAI's own website should be allowed, correct? So we're going to ask it about OpenAI's website. Oh, it was able to click on this one, so that click was actually successful, which is good. First successful click. I will admit, viewers, I'm a little disappointed on how many websites are blocked from ChatGPT's browsing function. Yeah, this is all very accurate information, so I'm glad that it, it is able to work very well when it's given a website it can actually access but I literally had to put in the OpenAI website to get that to work, which is incredibly disappointing. Without the web access, it would have no idea what GPT-4 is. I'm gonna go ahead and create a Google Doc in here. We're gonna leave ChatGPT a little message inside of the Google Doc. Then I'm gonna go ahead and share it. I have made it so that anyone with this link can go ahead and view this Google Doc. I wonder if OpenAI has access to this. Oh, so it completely denies my request. It doesn't even try. So is it analyzing the link beforehand. Well, viewers, let's go ahead and try the plugins. I'm a little bit more hopeful for these because apparently there's quite a lot of them. Go to the plugin store and here's a little information about plugins. Powered by third-party applications that are not controlled by OpenAI, be sure you trust a plugin before installation. So these might be a little bit better, a little bit less safety controlled by OpenAI's guardrails. Plugins connect ChatGPT to external apps. If you enable a plugin, ChatGPT may send parts of your conversation and the country or state you're in to the plugin to enhance your conversation. ChatGPT automatically chooses when to use plugins during a conversation depending on the plugins you've enabled. So can you enable more than one? Well, let's go ahead and check it out. All right, we've got a lot of plugins, actually. Okay, this is exciting. Go ahead and move my head to the corner here. Viewers, check this out. We've got over 11 pages of plugins already in here. Oh my god, Savvy Trader, real-time stock, crypto, and other investment data. God, are people already trying to let this thing do stock investments for them? Guys, I don't think it's that trustworthy yet. Ooh, create Spotify playlists for any prompt. More AI investing guides. Oh, I see a web pilot here. This might actually be a good workaround for our issue with the stock OEM chat GPT browsing. More historical market data. Chat with PDF. Plugin for asking questions, analyzing, and parsing through PDF documents by simply providing a PDF URL. There's also another asking PDF option in here. We have another search engine. Ooh, video insights. Interact with online video platforms like YouTube or Daily Motion. We've got chess. Create notebooks in Python, SQL, and Markdown to explore data, visualize, and share notebooks with everybody. Okay, it's clear there is a lot of really cool stuff. Zapier is also on here. Wolfram Alpha, Open Table. Wow. Let's just start to install stuff. We'll install the PDF one. We'll toss WebPilot in there as well. Wolfram Alpha, I mean, extra knowledge might as well. Show me, create and edit diagrams directly in chat. That sounds crazy. Let's install that one. All right, so we just did four plugins. And okay, yes, they're all going to try to work at once. Oh, you can only do three. You can only do up to three plugins at once. I see, I see. All right, let's get WebPilot and Show Me going. What can we create di diagrams of? Can we have it search the web for stuff? Create the Matt Vid Pro diagram based off your search results. Okay, it's using WebPilot, and WebPilot gets a bunch of information here. It does a Google search, it, it seems, and just gets you some general Google search information. And now it's creating a diagram. Oh, now it's using Show Me to do the diagram. Okay, working as intended. Oh my god, it worked! It's it's right in here. We've got the, the diagram based off the search results. That's actually really cool. Okay, in this diagram, Matt Vidpro is the central node representing the individual 
The YouTube channel AI node represents his YouTube channel where he posts videos about AI. The Twitter at node represents his Twitter account where he shares AI news. The open art profile node represents his profile on open art where he has shared some art pieces. You can edit this diagram online if you want to make any changes. That's really cool. Look at this, guys. It made a little diagram. Oh my god, I am so ready for ChatGPT Code Interpreter. If you guys don't know what ChatGPT Code Interpreter is, you gotta go see my video on it because it is it's such a mind blow. We don't have access to it yet, but it should be coming soon, most likely to ChatGPT Plus users. I want to see if it can do a diagram based off of information in a PDF. And I guess we could just change these on the fly. Oh no, it's for each, uh, it's for each chat. So I got to go ahead and create a new chat here and enable certain plugins. We'll do chat with PDF. We'll leave WebPilot on. Maybe it wants it. And we'll leave show me on as well. So I'm going to go ahead and download this example PDF for us to use in our testing. Now here is the link to all of this data. We've got names, positions, offices, age, start dates, and salaries in here. And it's just a little PDF of data. All we have to do apparently is copy the link to it. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Create me a diagram representing the data in this PDF. Again, this prompt is not very specific, so it might have trouble with this. Oh my god. We got the internal server error. All right, it's okay, chat GPT. Just try again. Oh, I see. I'm an I'm very uh I'm very not intelligent because I literally this file is only accessible from my local system. All right, I tossed it on Google Drive. All right, now grab the data from that Google Drive link. Oh, okay, it's using chat with PDF, so we're off to a good start. You can actually see what it's doing in the background with these little drop down menus. It's upset that it can't, it can't access. So after some trials and tribulations. I have landed at this particular solution. So the second PDF chatbot GPT plugin has an area where you can upload your PDFs and convert them to a .pdf URL, which is what you need for these things to be able to understand your PDFs. In the future, we'll be able to just straight up upload our PDFs into ChatGPT, but we can't do that yet. So I'm going to upload our test PDF, and now we can actually copy this ID, and it will work with our PDF. So yes, viewers, I would recommend this Ask Your PDF. I think it works a little bit better than the Chat with PDF. And again, we're going to enable the Show Me Diagram, because originally we wanted to create a diagram based off that test PDF. All right, let's see if this works. So this time this should be able to get us our PDF information. Oh my God, really an internal server error. And there we go, another internal server error. It seems there's a persistent issue with accessing the document. I guess we'll just paste the data right in. I wonder if that's gonna be too much for ChatGPT. Oh, it took it. All right, now it's gonna use the show me. I guess viewers just pretend that the PDF viewer was actually working as a plugin. Oh, there we go. We got this little node, uh, node diagram that it created based off of all of the different types of data that were in our PDF. All right, now we're going to try the Wolfram Alpha plugin, and we're going to ask it a math question, which is how many chickens could fit inside the Grand Canyon? It's not even using the plugin. It's just going to try to go off. This is a rather unusual question, but we can make some rough estimates based on the average volume of a chicken and the volume of the Grand... Oh, it is using Wolfram. Okay. Yeah, so we got the volume of the Grand Canyon. Oh, wow, there we go. We got the, the leaderage of uh, the Grand Canyon. So this is actually working pretty good. Now let's estimate the volume of a chicken. It's going to use Wolfram again. This is actually the first plugin that's working very nicely so far. And we got the rough, uh, you know, estimated volume of a chicken as if it was a sphere. And it does walk us through this very nicely, I must say. And it's doing Wolfram. It's using Wolfram plugin quite a few times to actually get this math correct. As you can see, it's literally doing the actual query for the math. So ChatGPT is not trying to do the math, which is a good thing because sometimes these language models mess up math. A rough estimate is that 5.094 times 10 to the power of the 14th chickens could fit inside the Grand Canyon. That's a lot of chickens. Help me put that into perspective for my feeble human brain. It sounds like a lot of chickens. Oh, wow. That is quite a lot lot of chickens. I, I must say that's over 509 trillion chickens. Is that correct? Uh, over a, uh, 509 trillion chickens can fit in the Grand Canyon. This would be enough to give every person on earth over 64,000 chickens. That's a lot of chickens per person. If we <laughs> line 
cleaned up 509 trillion chickens beak to tail, assuming each chicken is about 25 centimeters long. The line would stretch 1.2 times 10 to the 14th kilometers. This is enough to go from the earth to the sun and back over 424,000 times. Our line of chickens could stretch across the galaxy and back about 134 times. It does give us a sense of how large the Grand Canyon is. Thanks, chat GPT. How fast would a school bus have to go to jump the Grand Canyon with no ramp? Jumping the Grand Canyon in a school bus without a ramp is a complex problem that involves physics and engineering. The speed required would depend on many factors including the weight of the bus, the distance to be covered, and the aerodynamics of the bus. Alright, it's, it's gonna try to do it. Grand Canyon varies in width, but let's consider the relatively narrow part, about one kilometer, so we can use the physics of the projectile motion to estimate the speed needed to cover this distance. Okay, they're gonna ignore air resistance and assume the bus is launched horizontally, where D is distance, V is the initial velocity, and T is the time of flight. The time of flight can be... <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe it's calculating this for me. It's so funny. There it goes using Wolfram like we want. H is the initial height above the Grand Canyon. The height of the Grand Canyon rim above the landing point is about 1.6 kilometers. In this idealized scenario, ignoring air resistance and other real-world factors, a school bus would need to travel at the speed of approximately 123 miles per hour to jump a, a one-kilometer gap in the Grand Canyon from a height of about 1.6 kilometers. Please note that this is a highly simplified account calculation in reality the aerodynamics of the bus air resistance structural integrity of the bus at high speeds and many other factors would need to be considered so it did all the calculations though in here i mean it simplified it quite a bit but i gotta say viewers i really like this wolfram alpha plugin so obviously there's just way too many plugins in here for us to test out at the moment we'll try one last silly one this comic finder but it, it is important to note, viewers, that most of these are supposed to be very useful, very practical plugins. But there are some more entertainment-focused, really cool stuff in here, though, guys. We'll use Wolfram and Comic Finder at the same time. All right, for our final prompt here, what size infrastructure would I need to produce a lemon farm that is profitable enough to compete with Coca-Cola, assuming I can sell every lemon I produce and then find a comic about it? Let's see what we get. All right, so we're trying to compete with $33 billion of revenue. So we're going to do some uh, simple assumptions to make this calculation. Average price of a lemon, how many lemons a tree can produce a every year. And now we're going to do the math with Wolfram. Oh, I would only need a, a, a poultry 132 million lemon trees. Okay, so that's a, that's a fairly simple calculation now let's find a comic related to this topic oh it's gonna use comic finder all right it used it there we go we got a, a comic link this comic features a young entrepreneur who plans to create a monopoly on lemonade by flooding the market and then raising places ex then raising prices exploiting people's cravings for sugar and artificial flavoring another one about lemon stand in this in this comic a kid convinces an adult to buy expensive lemonade by appealing to nostalgia and peer pressure we've got another one here this one was literally just recommended to us because it references farmville which is a farming simulation game we can click these links though i think to actually read these comics yeah it's all about uh you know the lemonade stand oh wow these ones are definitely related i do really like this though it's able to just find these comics well viewers what do you think about this chat gpt update i think it's still in its very early stages and clearly needs a lot of work to get right i mean first off a lot of the plugins seem to be having some issues in their early development but again there is a lot of plugins to try out and i only tried out like a handful of them my favorite one was definitely wolfram alpha it just works and it gets you accurate information for all kinds of different calculations it could be very useful and the pdf ones they, they seem really cool but they're just not working right now at any rate the factory built-in chat gpt browsing doesn't seem to be much better than bing at the moment because it's so safety locked down it's not allowed to click on any links all of the link clicks just fail because they're blocked by OpenAI, which is really, really disappointing because it completely negates the feature being useful at all. Anyways, viewers, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And yeah, I'll keep you updated as different plugins come out, what plugins might be really beneficial to be used. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.